Let's show you how to create a new project, save a project, and open a saved project. When you first open Cubase, an empty screen appears before you. You need to either create a new project or open an existing one. Let's create a new project by selecting New Project from the File menu. The Templates dialog box will open up. Choose Empty. This will create a new project with nothing in it. Cubase now wants to create a folder on the hard drive so that your Cubase project song file and all of its related files are stored in one safe place. Navigate to where you would like this project to be created. You are not saving the project at this point. You are creating a folder on the hard drive that your project will get saved into later. Press Create on the PC or New Folder on the Mac to create a new folder for your project. Give your new folder a name. What's important here is that you are creating a folder on the hard drive to store your project into. This folder should have a unique name that is different than any other Cubase project you have created before. Click OK on the PC or Create on the Mac. Now click OK on the PC or Choose on the Mac. You should be looking at your very first project in Cubase now. If you look at the top of the main page in Cubase, also called the project page, you'll see the name of this project is called Untitled 1. To save a project, select Save As from the File menu. You will notice that Cubase is in the My First Project folder that you created earlier. This is where you want to save your project. Type in a name for your project. You can use My First Cubase Project. Click Save, and that's it. You can close windows such as the Mixer window, or you can close the project so that it's not open anymore. We want to close the project. Select Close from the File menu. Now that we have saved and closed your project, let's show you how to open it. Select Open from the File menu. Here you can navigate to the folder that has the project you wish to open. Select Recent Projects from the File menu. Choose the project you wish to open by clicking once on it. VST Connections allows you to set up the input and output signals of Cubase to your audio card. Cubase calls these buses. Go to the Devices menu and choose VST Connections. The key command for VST Connections is F4. You'll see six tabs at the top of the window. Input, Output, Group slash Effects, External Effects, External Instruments, and Studio. We're only going to cover input and output right now. See VST Connections in the Operation Manual for more details. Let's choose Output first. We want to start from scratch and remove anything that is currently there, just in case it's set up incorrectly. If you see anything below the bus name, right-click with the mouse and choose Remove Bus. Now press the Add Bus button and choose Stereo for Configuration and 1 for Count. This has now added a new stereo bus, left and right, allowing us to have audio in Cubase route to our audio hardware. Since we mainly listen to our music as a stereo mix, all we need is a stereo output. Depending on your audio hardware, your output should be set up now. You can, however, select the outputs of your choice from the device port pull-down menu. More sophisticated setups may require you to choose different outputs and even add more buses. Now let's press the input tab and set up the inputs we are going to use for recording into Cubase. Press the Add Bus button and choose Stereo for Configuration and 1 for Count. This has now added a new stereo bus, left and right, allowing us to have audio from our audio card's input route to Cubase for recording. If we wanted to record in mono or with one channel, we can make separate buses. Choose mono for configuration and two for count. This has now added two new mono buses. Next click underneath device port to select the audio inputs of your audio card for the stereo and mono inputs. In our case, we have the MI4 audio card. So we are selecting MI4 channel A, and MI4 channel B for our inputs. That's it. You should now be ready to record audio in Cubase and then play it back. For this next section, we are going to record a bass guitar in mono from the input mono in. Now let's add an audio track to record to. Go to the project menu and choose audio from the add track submenu. Choose mono for configuration and one for count. Click on the new track you've made and make sure you show the inspector. The inspector allows us to see and manipulate a lot of information for the selected track. Make sure that Mono In is selected for the audio track's input and that Stereo Out is selected for the audio track's output.
By setting mono in, we will be able to record the audio from the left input of our audio card into a track in Cubase. Setting the output to stereo out allows us to hear what we are recording. We'll want to have a click or metronome play in the background as we record the bass guitar, so that what we record aligns with the bars and beats in Cubase. Turn on the metronome or click button found on the transport panel. If you would like a two bar count in before you record, press the pre count slash click button to the right of the click. We now need to set the speed or the tempo of our project. This will directly affect how fast the click plays. You can set the tempo just below the click. We have a setting of 125, which means 125 BPM or beats per minute. We have a bass guitar playing through an amplifier with a microphone in front of the amplifier speaker. This microphone is plugged directly into the Steinberg MI4 microphone input. We have set the level on the MI4 so that we have enough volume without clipping. Pressing the monitor button will allow us to hear the bass guitar. You should see and hear the audio coming in to the right of the track. Click once on the word channel on the right hand side of the project page. This will display the channel fader for the selected track. Do the best you can to send the maximum amount of volume to the audio inputs of your audio card before you hear any distortion. Most audio cards show some kind of level or volume indication. If yours doesn't, don't worry, we can change the amount here. You will see a line near the top of the channel meter. Make sure the level does not go over this line. If you go into the red, you may cause clipping or distortion. Press the stop button on the transport twice. This will make sure we start recording on bar one. Make sure cycle is turned off and not highlighted. Press the record button to record the bass guitar. Since we have the pre-count slash click button on, we'll hear two bars of click before recording begins. Press the stop button when you're finished. Turn off the monitor and record enable button on the track so that we don't hear the input or record on the track anymore. Congratulations, you've just recorded your first piece of audio in Cubase. We are going to learn how to play back audio in Cubase. You might think this is very simple. Just hit play. It is actually this simple, but there are a few tricks to learn so that you'll be playing back what you want with precision. There are a few ways you can start playback in Cubase. Press the start button on the transport. Press the space bar on your computer keyboard. You can also press the enter key of the numerical computer keypad. We can double click in the lower half of the ruler. We can even select the audio event called audio 0101 and choose loop selection from the transport menu. There are a few ways you can stop playback in Cubase. We can press the stop button on the transport. Pressing the stop button twice moves the cursor to the beginning of the project. Usually this is bar one. We can press the space bar on the computer keyboard. This toggles between stop and start. We can also press the zero key on the numerical computer keypad. Cubase has the ability to loop or cycle a section of your project. To set the cycle location, you need to use the left and right locator. On the transport, set the left locator to one and the right locator to five. This tells Cubase that we want to loop or cycle between bars one and five. Make sure that the cycle button is turned on. Press start on the transport and now Cubase will play looping over and over until you press stop. There are three different modes for recording when the cycle is turned off. This is called linear recording. The three modes are normal, merge, and replace. When recording audio, normal and merge are the same. Selecting either of these will allow you to record over top of another audio event and it will appear as an overlap. You can then select between the overlapping events and determine which one will play. Replace mode when used will not overlap the audio if there is already something on the track. It will split or cut the audio where the recording takes place, replacing what was previously there. Keep in mind though, that the audio being replaced is not permanently deleted. 
It is only cut or trimmed away, allowing you to recover it later. Now we are going to add an electric guitar to our bass guitar using cycle recording. Recording with cycle on allows us to make multiple passes of our recording and then pick the best take. Let's add another mono track. You can see now that we have a track called Audio 1 and Audio 2. Up until now, we haven't been concerned about naming the tracks, but let's do this now. Double click on Audio 1 and rename it Bass. Double click on Audio 2 and rename it Electric Guitar. That looks a lot better now. It's always good to name your tracks before you start to record. This way, the audio event will take the name of the track. Since Audio 1 was the name of our first track, the audio event is named Audio 1 underscore 1, the suffix underscore 1 being the first event recorded on the Audio 1 track. We'll show you how to rename your audio files in the Editing Audio tutorial. Make sure Cycle is turned on and set the left locator to 2 and the right locator to 18. This will loop or cycle from bars 2 to 18. Go to the transport and make sure Mix MIDI is selected for the cycle record mode. This will allow us to record the electric guitar and as each cycle repeats, a new take will be created. We will then choose the best take to keep as our guitar line. Press the record enable and monitor buttons on the electric guitar track. Press the record button on the transport panel. As you record the guitar, let the cycle repeat three times so we have three different guitar takes. just recorded three different guitar takes. Now let's figure out how to select the best sounding one. Right click on the new guitar audio event that we just recorded and choose a take from the set to region submenu. Cubase has recorded all of the passes we made when we were recording in loop mode or cycle recording. These passes are called takes. In our example we have three different guitar takes. We can pick between them and choose which one sounds best. Stacked recording is very similar to cycle recording, but with one difference. You can see the takes that you record all the time instead of being hidden underneath. Create a new audio track. Rename the track Guitar 2. Go to the transport and make sure Stacked is selected for the cycle record mode. Press the record enable and monitor buttons on the Guitar 2 track. Press the record button on the transport. see the recorded audio appearing below each other as separate takes. Click once at the bottom of the Guitar 2 track to resize it larger. This allows you to see the audio takes much better. Deselect the record enable and monitor buttons. The top two are muted and the bottom one that is green colored, take 3, is the one that will currently play. Mute take 3 and unmute take 2. This allows take 2 to be heard. You can do the same for take 1. Continue on to Tutorial 2 Editing Audio, as we will show you how to edit what we've recorded using some of the tools.